Italy looked with confidence towards Schillacci in their semi-final against Argentina in Naples. The nation had one finger already on its motor horns, a night of celebration in the offing. And particularly so, with only 17 minutes gone, there was the now familiar sight of Schillacci wheeling away in triumph. Schillacci started the move there. And when Viali's close-range shot rebounds off Gurkachia, Schillacci's predatory instincts made sure that Italy got that important goal. Scalacci received scant recognition before this World Cup. Now he was already the tournament's joint leading scorer as he notched up goal number five. In the second half, for Italians, the unthinkable happened. Italy conceded their first goal in these finals. Maradona was at the heart of it. It was the gentle pass by him to Olata Kuchia over on the left. His cross flicked past goalkeeper Zenga by Kanija. So Kanija, just as he had been against Brazil, the man Maradona insisted should be in the side, brought Italy's charge to a halt, and the match went to penalties. <laughs> Over the years, England and West Germany have become old World Cup enemies. Classic matches in the 1966 final, for example, and the 1970 quarter-final. In its way, this matched them. England played their best football of the World Cup in this game, but they went behind 14 minutes into the second half. Stuart Pearce was punished for this foul on Hessler. But England were unfortunate when Bremer's kick reared up off the attacking Paul Parker and proceeded to loop beyond Peter Shilton into the net. So West Germany led 1-0. And it was a lead they held until 10 minutes from the end of normal time. Paul Parker's long cross bounced off Curler, fell conveniently for Lineker's left foot, and England were level. It was Lineker's fourth goal of the World Cup to add to the six he scored in Mexico, and it ensured that this semi-final, too, would be decided on penalties.
consolation, if that's what it